So California Governor Gavin Newsom has survived his recall in, in crushing fashion. So there was a time in July and August where the polls got really tight on this. And some people were speculating, hey, it could happen. He could get booted out of office, and then that would mean that Larry Elder takes over. Now, Larry Elder is a hardcore right-wing radio host who would have become governor of California. But in the end, there was uh, quite a bit of separation, and there was a lot of consolidating around Gavin Newsom among Democrats in California. So let me go ahead and give you the numbers here. W question number one was, should Governor Newsom be removed from office? People who said no, 64% as of right now, with 70% of the vote in, 64% said no. Yes was only 36%. So you can see it's like 5.8 million to uh, about 3.3 million. Then the second question is, if Governor Newsom is removed, who should take his place? There you have Larry Elder, 47%, crushing everybody else. Um, uh, Paffrath, I don't know his first name or who he is, 10%. He was a Democrat. He got the next one. Uh, Falconer got 9%. Bob Ross, I'm just kidding. I don't know if his name's actually Bob Ross. Bob Ross was that painter guy who was really cool. Um, Ross is a Dem. He got 6%. Um, so this ultimately ended in an embarrassing way for Larry Elder and for the Republicans. And the funny thing is, this was sort of a winnable race if they went with a Republican that was a lot more palatable to Californians. Because again, Larry Elder is hard right. He's a Trump stan. And in California, you're going to have a rough go of that because it's one of the most democratic states in the country. So there, there is precedent for this too because there was Gray Davis was recalled. He was a Democratic governor in California. And Arnold Schwarzenegger ended up winning as a Republican. So he's a celebrity and a Republican. He ended up becoming governor of California. That's it. That's how he became governor. Um, so it wasn't impossible for a Republican to win, but he would have had to do it uh, Schwarzenegger style, which he presented himself as a moderate. He would have had to do it Larry Hogan style, who presented himself as a moderate. Um, Larry Elder did not do that. Sort of leaned into his, his Trumpism. Leaned into those hardcore right-wing beliefs. Now, on the one hand, that's more respectable because it's like, oh, you actually believe these things. But on the other hand, it's politically silly because it's never going to work in California and it's never going to work in Hawaii and it's never going to work in New York. It's never going to work in the hardcore um, democratic states. So this ended up becoming, instead of being a, a referendum on Newsom, he managed to flip the narrative and make it a referendum on Trumpism. So, they, rightly, they pointed out, hey, Larry Elder isn't in favor of the minimum wage. He's not in favor of any gun control. He's anti-vax. And they, would just, they were just clonking him over the head with all these beliefs that are wildly out of lockstep with what Californians believe. And don't get it twisted, Newsom has a lot of dirt on him. I mean, he was famously caught eating at this, you know, elite restaurant in the middle of COVID. Everybody else has to wear a mask. He's in there with a bunch of assholes not wearing a mask. And so it, it was this... It was this big story because it was a sign of this colossal hypocrisy of the ruling class. Um, they were not wearing masks, but the servers have to wear masks. And it was like, look, this is a guy who's do as I say, not as I do. And But funny enough, when you looked at the polls, so people were able to get over that. They didn't care that that happened. But also when you look at the polls, um, they two-thirds of California voters support the mask mandate and the vaccine mandate. Now, I don't, I'm not well-versed enough on what the specifics are in, in the example of California with the mask mandates and the um, vaccine mandates, but whatever those specifics are, the people of California in droves support it. And so one of the things he did was he leaned into, listen, the second they take over, there are going to be no more coronavirus protections. This guy is not in favor of vaccines. He's not in favor of masks. It's going to be the Wild West out here. We need to make sure we protect people. And the voters of California, again, very democratic state, they agree with COVID restrictions. Now, they may even be more in favor of restrictions than I am. You know what I mean? But that's the electorate there. And so the other thing this shows is Trumpism is still the base of the Republican Party because they had other options. There were other options that were non-Trumpist options, and they went with the Trumpist. So they're sort of in this conundrum. They're sort of in this pickle of like the people who do the best in our party are the people who can't seem to win recently at the national level when it was Biden versus Trump, but even at the state level. However, 
here's where I'm going to I'm going to caution everybody because all the articles are already saying that like well Democrats are feeling confident now going into the midterms. First of all, they didn't do any election reform, which means they need to win by like 6 or 7 points just to keep the numbers they already have because all you know, they need gerrymandering, redistricting, all these issues. They didn't do anything on that front, and as a result of that, the Republicans have a giant built-in advantage. But also, you can't get cocky. Biden barely squeaked out a victory against Trump when half a million uh, Americans died. In the midterms, generally speaking, turnout is lower, too. And whenever turnout is lower, that helps Republicans. So the base of the Republican Party is going to show up guaranteed. And Democrats can get a little lackadaisical in the midterms. And that would spell doom for the Democrats. So putting all that stuff together, they're going to get this false sense of security. Because, yes, it you know, this strategy can work in isolation from time to time when you have the boogeyman that's a that's a genuine boogeyman. So Biden ran on let's get back to normal and, and this guy's insane. Just look at him. Effectively, Newsom ran on the same thing. Uh, let's get back to normal, keep these restrictions in place. And this guy's fucking crazy. Look at him. That's a seasonal message, dog. I don't think that could work in perpetuity. I think that, you know, that only takes you so far. At some point, on the Democratic side specifically, you have to be for something. You can't just be, I'm against the Republican. Okay, that's easy. That's obvious. Anybody who's on the left agrees with that. But what else? What else? I mean, Newsom ran on single-payer health care in his last election, and he's dragging his feet on it. He's not really dragging his feet on it. He's actually against it, and he's making sure it doesn't get into place. So you got to actually do shit. It can't just be, look at the boogeyman over here. And I think they're going to get too comfortable, and they're going to run on that when that's not enough. Like, at a certain point, the horrors of Trumpism are going to be uh, something of the past to Americans, just like with George W. Bush. The horrors of George W. Bush went away. Now he has a favorable approval rating. The horrors of Trump, the horrors of, the horrors of Larry Elder, who is a Trumpist, that'll sort of fade away at some point. And then what are you going to run on? And then what are you going to run on? So add in the fact that the Republicans have a built-in advantage and the Democrats need to win by a lot to win anything. And and add in the fact that Republicans are going to show up in the midterms, Democrats maybe not. And add in the fact that this message, they're going to get overconfident with this lazy message. I don't think it's going to go well for the Democrats in the midterms. Not at all. But they're going to take this, and they're going to take confidence from this. And I think that's the wrong takeaway. So, you know, if they had run somebody who was a little more palatable, it would have been a lot closer. But since they ran, you know, a right-wing radio host was the face of the opposition, uh, Newsom was able to clearly make it um, a referendum on them, a referendum on Trumpism. So Biden won California by like 30 points. You know, Newsom's going to win this by a lot as well. I don't know if this is a model elsewhere moving forward. But, I mean, I just think in today's day and age, I do think partisanship is at just record highs as well. You have the hardcore partisans. There's really, there's little wiggle room anymore. And how that bodes in the future is yet to be seen. But I do think in the midterms, the Republicans are a favorite by, by quite a bit. But listen, we'll find out, you know, we'll find out soon. But they did run on a message of fear. Like, you really want this guy in power? You really want the anti-vaxxer in charge? You really want the pro-Trump person? You really want the anti-minimum wage person? You know, hey, it's your prerogative, but don't do it. It's me or it's the Republican. That's how they were able to message this thing. And it definitely worked in the short run. Now we'll see what Gavin Newsom does from here on out. My guess is not much beyond the status quo.